I left the phone number here. Nobody called, did they? On the way over, I mean? No calls. These things take time. You know, we can drive you crazy. Dismiss it. Nothing wrong with your wife was that she didn't have any trouble. Only the way she was sick in the morning. They're all sick in the morning. This happens all the time. Yeah, but not to me. Dismiss it. Dixieland. Horses. This man was wearing a light tan gabardine suit when last seen. Television. Age 27, height 6 feet 2 inches, rangy, hair light brown, slight wave, eyes brown, no visible scars, nose, mouth, and jawline predominantly Anglo-Saxon American. This man should be approached with caution if recognized. Five minutes, stop. The bus leaves in five minutes. Five minutes, stop. Get 
Get back. Character. Yeah, what have I got to be happy about? Sure, maybe if I had a place with some class, carpet on the floor, plush around instead of being stuck with a crumb joint. Look at all the nice people you meet. Crumbs. Beer drinkers. Dames with hangovers. Juggles, I love you. You don't love anybody, you love to drink. <laughs> What's your name? Boyd. 
Yes, sir. <clears throat> What's your pleasure? What? What do you want to drink? I don't know. Well, you can have a martini, a Manhattan, an old-fashioned uh, horse's neck, gin, scotch, bourbon, Irish rye, rock and rye. Anything. Anything. Bourbon highball. Are you happy, boy? Yeah, I guess so. You don't look it. Here. That beer will never get you any place. All right, that's enough. Stop annoying the customers. I'm a cheerer-upper. You're a crumb. <laughs> Who is she? Just a barfly. What's the matter? Is your drink too sweet? Oh, no. No, it's fine, thank you. Well, chuckles. We've got over an hour. I can't think of a better way to kill it. A few drinks to kind of loosen up the train ride. Good talk, a beautiful girl. Now, don't be modest. Do you know why I say that, Helen? It's right here. Look, real people. Real people, Helen. A lot of heart. And believe me, what's here shows up here. See, why is it we never decided to do this before? Not my fault, you know. I ask you. You played it pretty cozy, but that's the thing I admire in a woman, Helen. Sincerity, good judgment. A girl who takes her time and looks a man over before deciding to go out with him. And that's a quality hard to find in a pretty girl these days. I see all kinds of people. You're all the same. Oh, Chuckles. Helen, this is Chuckles. You didn't know I had a 23-year-old niece, did you? No. Glad to have you around. You uh, dress up the joint. Thank you. There, you see what I was telling you? You keep an eye on her chuckles when I'm not here. You never have to worry about anything in here, lady. Uh, you want to sing? Oh, a little drier next time. That means not so sweet. No, this is fine for me just now. Now, that's a smart girl. It's better to coast a little while. That's right. But for me, chuckles, you haven't got bursitis. Bend it this time. Twenty-three. Did I hit it right? Well, uh, most people think I'm twenty-five. You see, I have a lot of responsibility in my position. And I guess that makes one seem older. Of course it does. But uh, that's your uh, manner, intellect, self-possession. But with your face... Where are you going? It's early. The old lady's waiting. You've got nice shoulders. <laughs> I'll see you around. Take it easy. Well, do you think I ought to come back? Well, I know it won't speed things, but I want to be there at the right time. Yeah. You, you sure you've got the right number? Tell Skip to get off that phone. I want to talk to him. Leave him alone. He's busy. He's having a baby. <laughs> Chuckles a boilermaker. Sure. Only not in here. You're not gonna die in my joint. Why not? What's he got to live for? Dismiss it. Stop annoying the customers. The young lady never spoke true words. <laughs> yeah? Well, I'll listen to your troubles, but you got a sherry flip. Waiter. Right with you, sir. Chuckles. What? Hey, Chuckles, it's gone again. Uh, what trouble is this worth? What's the sense of having a television set if you can't even see it? You mean anybody wants to? I do. I like to watch it beat each other's brains out. Fourteen hundred bucks installed, the guy charges me. Push button, picture control, reflected image, three by four foot screen. What do I get on it? Wrestlers, crumbs. Hey, hey, what's this, an office? Don't be a little restless, Chuckles. They merely illustrate the society in which we live. We're all restless. Everybody beats each other's brains out. You know something, Henry. 
You're extremely dull. I'm sorry. I find you very exciting. I was about to suggest that we wind up this drunken evening together. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ah, you couldn't go the distance. Hey, Harry, it's for you. That's a moot question. I'm not here. Harry, there's been a killing down at the bus terminal. They want you to come down there right away. You haven't seen me. Tell them I'm not here. You'll get yourself fired. That's impossible. What's the matter with you? Are you crazy? Stop annoying the customers. I'm no longer a working member of the Fourth Estate. The city editor doesn't know it yet, but he'll be duly informed. Oh, big words. I'll have another. One for the road, and that's all. I think this is what you want, Captain. Thanks. Hey, isn't it? Brought out. See if she recognizes him. E questo l'uomo che avete visto? No. No, ho paura. Se ha ammazzato il guidatore, ammazzerà anche me. No. Io non so niente. Sono una povera vecchia. Mi ammazzerà anche me. Gunther Whitehall. Ho paura. What does she say? She's just scared. Sure. Tell her we'll protect her. Il capitano vi assicura che nessuno vi farà del male. Non abbiate paura. Dite, è questo l'uomo che avete visto? Sì. Sì, questo è l'uomo che era seduto vicino a me. Oh, non dimenticherò mai la sua faccia. È lui che ha ammazzato il guidatore, vero? L'avete arrestato? Non ancora, grazie signora. This is the man. She says you can't forget him. Good. Right, please. Now, here's your first lead. Gunther Wyckoff, fugitive from the state hospital for the criminal insane. Yeah, check with the files. Evening, Ruling house murder. Wyckoff, the guy who slashed the way for three years. Magnet for the killer of the bus driver, driver Titan. Insane killer fire. returns to Terminal City. Wyckoff. Yeah, that's right. Gunther Wyckoff. Armed. Dangerous. It should be perfectly obvious to you by now, young lady, that you have been stood up. Your young man has forgotten all about you. You kidding. Juggle. Now you take it easy. I want to buy Harry another molded milk. Yeah, that's an admirable idea, but for the moment you'll have to excuse me. You know Harry's on a diet. Leave him alone. He's a happy character. He's got ulcers. How do you know? You ever see him? Dismiss it. Tell Skip to come here. What for? To mix me a drink. You got a drink. Hey, Skip. Table. Right. Of course I don't fool myself. A girl with my position... Well, a lot of men invite me out just because they think I can get them in to see the boss. I understand, Helen. The world's full of fellows like that. Promoters. Operators. But I admire the way you handle them. Sometimes it's rather difficult. Well, of course it is, and an awful strain. That's why I thought of this weekend up at the lake. Away from all this uh, heat and a few laughs. And... After all, you've got to learn to break the tension. I realize it. Well, never students. The weekend's already started. Is there something wrong with that? No. No, of course not. 
It's just that... Well, I think I told you I live with my mother. Mm-hmm. You see, mother's had a heart condition for years. And whenever I go away, I guess I can't help feeling a little uneasy. Well, of course you can't. That's a big responsibility for a girl. I don't care who it is. But you've got to learn to develop a philosophy about these things. Take the bitter with the sweet. Now, I've always felt that when my time's up, that's it. I'm ready. No regrets. I've had plenty of fun. Well, it's not the responsibility so much. Mother's a very understanding woman. But in her condition, so as not to worry her unnecessarily, I don't always tell her where I'm going. You're right. Don't I know? We all have problems in human relations. My marriage... Well, uh, when we're better acquainted, there are a lot of things I want to tell you. This is a special police bulletin. The police have good reason to suspect that the man who shot and killed a bus driver in the Orchard Street Depot tonight is Gunther Wyckoff, a recent fugitive from the state hospital for the criminal insane. This is a photograph of the suspected murderer, Gunther Wyckoff, 27 years old, 6 feet 2 inches tall, light brown hair, brown eyes. This man is a ruthless, dangerous killer. He is still at large somewhere in Terminal City. He is armed. Wyckoff may be in hiding, but he could be on the street, in a public place, in a hotel. Maybe you can help me. He could be anywhere in the city. Because when I first saw you, when I first walked in that office, I said, there's a girl with intellect. And believe me, that's a rare combination. Beauty and intellect. Yeah. We repeat, if you see the... Get come and talk to me. Dial 1119. It chuckles, it's snowing again. You want a drink? Coming right up. Why, Chuckle? How about it, mister? Another? No. Skip, take over. I'm uh, going to get another bottle of the move. Chuckles, you're a lovable character. You just tell a good story. You know? It's about time. I tell you, it was a backfire. Then why did that woman scream? It's none of our business. Come along. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a cop over there.
Get over there. All of you. Why don't you sit down? the telephone at the drugstore. Call police headquarters. Tell them you're calling for Mark, B-42. A man with a gun, barricaded in a bar at second in spring. Tell them I've been hit. Right. Come on, honey. What do you want? Don't get up. We gotta rush him. Somebody get hurt. He can't get us all. Maybe we can talk him into letting us go. You can't talk to him. Skip, how many bullets does that gun shoot? The gun holds eight. He's fired two. That's six left. He's got another clip. That's eight more shots. They heard a scream. So there must be other people up there with them. I didn't get a chance to find out. Please stand back. You're in the line of fire. Get all the people out of those apartments. Start a barricade down the next block. Okay. What's it all about, Lieutenant? Right? Information, please. Information? Would you be kind enough to give me the number of the Rialto drugstore on... on 2nd Street? Thank you very much. Is this the Rialto drugstore? I'm calling from the bar across the street. Would you please tell the policeman in charge outside your store that I want to speak to him? Who 
Who's this? Captain Keever, homicide. Oh, yes. You remember me, Captain? This is Gunther Wyckoff. I don't want any trouble, Captain. I've come back to see the doctor, Dr. Farron. Just a minute, Captain. You. No. Come here. Talk to him. Tell him what's happening in here. Please. A man's just been killed. There are five of us in here. He won't let any of us leave. I can't stand it! Tell him there's another woman. There's another woman. He's locked all the doors. You've got to get us out of here. We'll all be killed. Something. Do whatever he says, but get us out of here. Get us out. Go back. Sit down. Hello. Hello. Don't let the police come anywhere near, Captain. All right, son. Now, you don't want to hurt innocent people. You come out of that bar, and I promise to let you talk to Dr. Farron. No, I don't want to do that, Captain. I'm staying here. You just send the doctor in to see me. You just send the doctor here by 9 o'clock. I won't wait any longer. 25 minutes, or every one of them will have to die. Please, Earl. You've got to get me out of here. How about through the cellar? Stairs lead to a steel fire door. We could blow it. Windows? Just those in front and one in the washroom. Not much help with those steel bars. We could throw in some gas. No. Before they have time to work, he'd kill every one of them. 9K to Control 1, calling from car 11. Control 1 to 9K, go ahead. Have homicide, locate Dr. Farron and bring him to 2nd and Spring immediately. Control 1 to 9K, roger. Who's Farron? The police psychiatrist. What does he want him for? Ask him. Uh, now, uh, look, son. It's, uh, it's obvious that uh, you've got a problem. After all, everybody's got a problem. I've got a problem. She's got a problem. But uh, we have to learn to master them instead of letting them master us. Now, now take, for instance... I was just reading a magazine article on a train, and it had a lot to say about... Uh, by... Uh, I want another drink. Buy me another drink, Wyckoff. Look, mister, my wife's in a hospital. I gotta make a call. I think you'd better sit down. 25 minutes is a lifetime. Maybe he'll come. Excuse me. Come on, stand back here, please. 
What's the trouble, Pete? Oh, Dr. Farron, a call just went out for you. Oh, I didn't know. I was on my way home. Captain Keever wants you. He's up at the barricade at the next corner. You better go back around the block. Okay, Pete. I beg your pardon. Excuse me. got the authority to be here, but keep your men under cover and out of our way. You'll have to get off the street. I understand, Lieutenant. Lieutenants. Say, have a camera set up at the other end of the street to cover that barricade down there, will you? Tolan, you get in the alley across the street from the bar. Carpenter, you cover from the other end of the block. You better come in from the rear. Say, doctor, captain's looking for you. I'm looking for him. Right there. I want the janitor of that building. Find him. Get him out of bed. Bring him here right away. Right. Hank, anyone brief you? No. It's Wyckoff, John. Wyckoff? In the bar with other people. I just had him on the phone. So far, five of them are still alive. Maybe I can help. That's what Wyckoff said. Wyckoff? He asked for me? Yeah. He wants to talk to you. Says that's what he came back for. What else did he say? Send you in in 25 minutes or he'd kill everyone else in the bar. Better let me go in, Hank. That makes a lot of sense. This is not an ordinary criminal trying to make a deal. Wyckoff is a demented man with a dream. You can't handle him by ordinary police methods. He'll justify keeping that threat. But he won't kill you. He might, but I don't think so. He knows me. I spent considerable time with him. My professional opinion helped prevent his execution. He'll remember that. Yeah. I remember that, too. In his mind, I'm his only friend. If you talk to him, you use the phone. You can't establish contact with a patient over a phone, Hank. You've got to talk to him like I'm talking to you, face to face. He's up there now, face to face with five other people. You want to go up and make it six just so you can talk to him? You use the phone. That's for me. Look, it's the hospital. They're trying to reach me. I told you. Stay where you are. Nothing more you can do. Sixteen minutes of nine. You know what's happening right now? Back at the office, the emperor at the city desk must be going out of his mind. He told him to hold the presses on the final and replay for an extra. Everybody in the building standing by. Right down to the guys on the loading dock. Even they know something big's happened because they heard the presses stop. Up in the city room, everybody's frozen, watching one rewrite man pound his brains out of his typewriter. 
There's a copy boy standing near him, shifting from one foot to another. The rewrite man finishes his paragraph. He yells copy. The boy rips it out of his machine. He's off like a shot for the composing room. Downstairs, a linotyper sets up the copy. They're bringing up the mats of your pictures from three years ago. The emperor himself's tearing his hair out for a screamer head. He'll come up with something corny. Gunman berserk, maybe, but he'll think it's good. And the presses start roaring again. Two minutes after, they, they're loading the trucks. A minute after that, the news is a yell in the extra on the streets. Just like it happened three years ago. Remember Wyckoff? Three years ago, I didn't have my shoes off for 24 hours. You were the biggest news break this town ever saw. Until tonight. Now you're bigger. Gunther Wyckoff returns. Right now you're on the wires to every sheet in the country. Your picture being telephotoed to every town. I picked a great night to quit the business. I'm an eyewitness to a Pulitzer Prize story and can't even get to a telephone. You're dull, Harry, extremely dull. Got a souped up convertible. Tank full of gas. Make a deal with that policeman. 24 hours start. Just the two of us. That's all we'd need. I'll show you places the cops will never find. Buy me a drink, Wyckoff. Decide on this. What do you think about Ulrich for the man? Well, he's small enough, and he's a good shot. He'd be a good man for it. Well, after we turn off the air conditioning system, a man enters the head of the coils here. We lower him to the turn. He crawls along here to the outlet. Then we fire through the grill. You been in there? Several times to clean the ducts. At the outlet, how much space would you say there was between the bars of the grill? Oh, inch, inch and a half. That's plenty of room for a 38. It's a natural, Captain. Nobody's going to talk this guy into surrendering. We're going to have to blast him out of there. How long would you say it would take for a man crawling slowly to reach the grill? A couple of minutes, not any more. further back. Let me know when he's ready and I'll tell you when to start him down. Right. Over here's what we're going to do. We're going to tie ropes on your feet and we're going to lower you down into here. When you reach that turn, you crawl on the vent and up to the grill. Those newspapers of yours, they lied about me. They wouldn't listen to me. They didn't want the true story. But this time it'll be different. There's still time to put it on the record. This time you'll have to listen. Everybody will have to listen. I don't like it, Hank. If it goes sour, it's liable to trigger Wyckoff into anything. He might blast those people. He's promised to blast them already. 
That's a risk we'll have to take, and so will they. I know what you're up against, May. I'm only asking you not to let urgency motivate the wrong action. What do you suggest we do? Sit down here and wait for them to come out? I risk men's lives getting Wyckoff alive once before. I provided the district attorney with plenty of evidence for a conviction. Then you people stepped in. You won. Wyckoff wasn't executed. He was put away for three he years. He was put away for life, for the safety of society and for treatment. We no longer execute the sick. We're not in the Middle Ages. I'm not arguing morality. If Gunther Wyckoff had gone to the chair, the life of one man, maybe two, maybe all the people in that bar would have been spared tonight. Hank, listen to me for just a moment. Wyckoff has always been unbalanced. Most of us are in one way or another. But the pressures of tension and circumstances made this boy a killer. This is not news to me. My examinations, his subsequent hospital history, all give away the nature of his fixation. Fighting his inability to function normally, he's trying to overcome insecurity by proving to a hostile world that he's a hero. Remember how he found his room full of war books and all kinds of weapons? Yeah. But all those fancy words don't help my problem one jugful. I think they do. Those war books gave me a clue to Wyckoff's mind. They gave me something to work on. I'm not going to let you go in there, John. Hank, I can solve the problem. If I can talk to him, I'll break him down as I've done before. I'll shock him back to reality. Yeah, it's a risk. But that's my responsibility. All right, Whitey. Start him down. Sorry, John. It's too late. Sweat tears. That's what the man said. What good did it do? We were going to have a better world. That's what they said during the first one. That's what they told us this time. But what happened to that world? Look at the people's faces in the streets. What do you see? Sadness. Sadness everywhere going to give us a break, they said. Now, what kind of a break did they give me? I'm a good man with a gun. Who gave it to me? Who told me to use it? Ever since I was a kid, I believed people should sit down at a table and try to reason things out. But they didn't want to sit down and reason. They attacked us, and when you're attacked, you've got to hit back. Kill or be killed. I was no officer. Get that straight right now. Four times they wanted to make me an officer. Just did my job. You think I wanted the medal? Do you hear what I'm telling you? Yeah, yeah, sure I do. I used to think about guys like you. Pretty soft, wasn't it? Twenty-five yards offshore when the shell exploded. Four men left when the boat hit the beach. Lieutenant dead. Not even a sergeant. One thing I remember, I had to get across that beach. Sand dunes up ahead, not much cover, but enough if I could make it. And they'd never get me! And I saw them. Back off the beach, all along the high ground. Groups of men bringing up more guns. I was all alone. The ditch made a turn. I rounded the bend. Air support they promised us. They're going to straight the beach ahead of the first wave, knock out the fixed emplacements. And where are the planes? I keep running towards them, firing all the time. A third man pulls the gunner's body off the gun and whirls it around towards me.
you did this to me. I knew it was wrong. I shouldn't Stop have. Stop it. I was going away with him. That's a sin. It's God's way of stopping us, of punishing me. Helen, cut it out. I was lonely. I was unhappy. I really thought he loved me. He promised. No, I didn't. I didn't promise a thing, and I can go back and prove it. And you better leave God out of it, too. God's got other fish to fry besides you. <laughs> they got Ulrich out alive, but he'd be lucky if he makes it to the hospital. Come down here right away. We're going to rush him. Hank, why... If we can save some of those people, it's better than losing them all. You know how that thing works? Turn it on. Get back over there. How long have you been here, sir? A couple of minutes. Then you must have heard the gunshot. I didn't hear nothing. I heard it. Then you're just the man I'm looking for. Would you mind telling me your name, sir? Uh, Fred Backett. I'm a bookkeeper. Well, Mr. Backett, the police seem to be in a bit of a dilemma. Yeah? This gunman is holding five or six people as hostages. Now, that, of course, limits police action. Now, Mr. Backett... Are there any men in there? In the bar? Oh, yes, three or four. The police aren't quite sure. Why don't they rush him? Attack the gunman? Well, yes. You see, this man is armed, and they're not. Well, they're four against one. Why don't they do something? Well, I couldn't say. Uh, pretty hard to tell what to do, isn't it? Say, uh, why don't you set the building on fire? That would get them out of Well, now, that's an idea, but of course we'd lose the building. Well, folks, these men who have just voiced their opinions are all spectators. Just as you, sitting before your television set in the comfort of your home, are spectators to this exciting spot news television broadcast brought to you through the facilities of WKYL. We are at Spring and Second Street, where we are televising the police siege of Gunther Wyckoff, the mad gunman. And now, for the benefit of the folks who tuned in late, I should like to say that this is the most dramatic spectacle I have ever had the good fortune to witness. And now, as our cameras cover this scene here tonight, just a moment, folks, this might be interesting. Keep your Change eyes on that one. gentleman. That's Captain Keever, captain of the Homicide Squad. And at the moment, he's talking to Police Lieutenant Tallman. I don't seem to be able to identify the... Who'd you say that was? That's Dr. Farron, folks. Yes, Dr. Farron, the police psychiatrist. And from the worried look on the captain's face, I guess he could use the doctor himself. I don't mean... They're going to send Farron in. You've got your deal, Wyckoff. Now you can let us go. We'll wait for the doctor. I don't think any of us envy him his job. Now that looks interesting. Dr. Farron and the captain seem to be in a bit of an argument. I wish it were possible for you to hear their conversation, but of course that's forbidden. Well, it looks like Dr. Farron has lost the argument, whatever it was about. They're not going to send him in. I'd like to say right now, folks, that no one has more respect for Captain Keever. A man who has served the public for... There's a way to make him, Wyckoff. Higher authority. The press. Power of the people. My paper. If he refused, it could break him. If I call my city editor, tell him what you want, have him turn the pressure on Kiva, threaten him. That's right, that's right. My paper could order the police to send in Farron. Tell him what I want. The boss, nobody else. Give 
me the city editor. Make it snappy. This is Harry. Harry! I can't talk to anybody but Frank. Don't argue with me. Put him on the phone. Who ever heard of a follow-up without names? Who are those people in the bar? What kind of a story is this? I'm trying to tell you. You can't... Oh, now, don't give me that. Well, what do you want? Harry's on the phone. It sounds kind of peculiar. He won't talk to anyone but you. Boss, wait a minute. Tonight he gave me that stale beef about being all washed up, going to get loaded. This time he really did it. Well, he picked a fine night to get loaded. Hey, wait a minute, Chief. You were on the desk yourself. I heard you talk about getting plastered, telling the city editor off. Do me a favor. Don't talk to him tonight. He won't mean anything he says. All right, all right. Tell him to go home and sleep it off. He's very busy, Harry. I'll talk to you in the morning. Dorothy, listen. Take some hot milk. Get back over there. Get back. Let him call again. Let him try again. No. They don't want to listen. Eight fifty-eight twenty-five. Check. All right. After they pull the main switch, have them wait 30 seconds for the man to get to the entrance. Then we blow the door. It's pretty strong. The place used to be a speakeasy. Have Ed use RDX just enough Hank. to blow the locks and hinges. Right. Hank, that's the worst thing you can do. The minute the lights go out, it'll become frantic and start firing. I demand... You demand you... nothing. I'm running this operation. I demand the right to do my job. You did it three years ago. And that's going to be awful hard to explain to a policeman's widow. Move the squad cars so we can put their spotlights on the door. Get a light on that roof across from the bar. Borrow a floodlight from the television outfit, but don't hit a switch until the lights go out in that front door. Yes, sir. Get over to that cellar and don't let him pull the lights. I can't explain this, folks. Your guess is as good as mine, but it looks like Thanks Dr. Camera Ferris three. is going into that bar. Camera three, get that man crossing the street in your camera and pan with him. And change to your eight and a half inch lens. Come in. Come in, doctor. Lock the door. Try to get here sooner. Did you? Put down the gun. It's hard to talk over a gun. You never had trouble talking before. That's right. We've talked before. Don't come any closer, Doctor. We're friends. No, Doctor. We've talked, but we're not friends. Then why did you come back? Why did you send for me? Because I have to kill you. No, you don't. You don't have to kill anybody. You're sick, and I'm your doctor. And I want to help you. I said, stay away from me. Stand over there.
You have to trust me, Gunther. Trust you, Doctor? You did three years ago. Yes. You thought you fooled me, didn't you, Doctor? You said you could understand. You were going to help me. Well, you didn't fool me, Doctor. I knew you'd tell them, and they sent me away. But I've come back. They'll never send me away again. Unless you let me help you, Gunther, you'll die. I'm not afraid, Doctor. I wasn't afraid in the war. I saw a lot of people die. We've talked about that. Let's talk about it again. No, I don't want to talk about it. I want to think about it. Not with you. Gunther, put down that gun. No. Gunther? I like a gun in my hand. They gave it to me, didn't they, Doctor? They gave me a gun. They told me to kill. No, Gunther. Now they try to stop me. That's their mistake, isn't it, Doctor? No, Gunther. They gave me a uniform. They made me a soldier. They, they, they gave me a gun. They told me to kill. No, Gunther, we faced this thing together before. We must face it again. It's wrong to kill. You know that, Gunther. You've known it all your life. You've known it ever since you've been a little boy. From your parents, from your teachers in school, from your conscience, and from your religious training. Everything that you've ever done has told you that in the eyes of God, it's wrong to kill. There was a war. They gave me a uniform. Yes, there was a war. But you weren't in it. Fifteen million others were in the war, Gunther, but not you. You never saw a uniform. Don't say any more, Doctor. You were never a soldier. You were drafted and you wanted to go, but you were rejected, weren't you, Gunther? I told you, Doctor, you better shut up. And you couldn't face the reason they rejected you. You went out of your head. You killed. <laughs> and then to justify a killing you knew was wrong, you invented a dream. You made yourself believe you were a soldier. I was, I was. You made yourself believe you were a soldier because you knew that soldiers were the only people permitted to kill without committing a crime. No, no, no. It's a dream, isn't it, Gunther? You know it isn't real, don't you, Gunther? And you've got to face it. You've got to face it right now. You've got to face reality. <laughs> The doctor lied. Sure, sure he lied. No. I know, I can tell. You believed him. No, no, I believed you. I know what it's like. I was in the war myself. The first war. You all believed him. No. No! Listen to me, son. Dr. Farron's dead. You killed him. That's what you came to Terminal City for, wasn't it? You don't have to kill us. You heard what the doctor said. Every one of you. Please, let me live. You said you were lonely, unhappy. Uh, for myself, I don't care. My wife, my children, Wyckoff. You said when your time's up, you were ready. That's a hospital. I got to answer it. No. I got a no. Stay where you are. You're all the same. Every one of you. You have nothing to live for.
You had no right to shoot me. General Hospital? Sure. Returning you work, please. What? Eight pounds? And he said I got no reason to live. does a man have to go to prove that he's right? This is Harry. Give me the managing editor. Not the city editor. I want the man he works for. The managing editor. Here. Where have you been? Dishing out parking tickets? Might have known you'd be here. You missed all the fun. Watch. All right. And tell him to be sure and use my full name, Harrison D. Barnes. I'm going. I'm going home. My name will be on the radio. Mother will be worried. What was his first name? Chuck was the only one I ever There was a gun in back of the bar. He didn't get to it. White House went to watch it. Where were you? Working the table over there. Chuck yelled to watch the bar. That's when he went to the phone. Look, I gotta get over to the hospital. I gotta see my wife. All right, go ahead. But I have to want to talk with you when you get back. It seems a shame to waste these after the awful strain we've all been under. Break the tension. <laughs> Skip! Skip! Ready? Well, listen carefully. Sudden lightning last night blasting from the guns of Terminal City's police wrote an epitaph to Gunter Wyckoff, the mad killer who held six hostages, terrified in a bar for over three quarters of an hour. Wyckoff, who escaped from the state asylum, had overrun his... Hey, Harry, what are you doing? All right, on your way. Break it up. Party call.